affecting US global Yeah, we've got an operation uh, called Operation Constant. Yeah. Uh, there's no reason why it's called Constant, it's just that my operation is going to the periodic table. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and there it is. And Sergeant Sheila McPhee runs that.
Sergeant Reed from Hendon persuaded me very much against my will to support the idea of a borough-wide public drinking ban, and he was absolutely quite right about it. And we, we have had that, but there's been a change in the legislation, so we have to go through a whole lot of hoops to set it up again. But certainly, from my part, I'm very keen to get this done. And, and you know, there are things we can do to make life difficult for small drinkers, as, as they make life difficult for other people. So, and that's yeah. when they make a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. So if we can do something, we will. <coughs> Any questions from that side? Sorry, sorry. sorry. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just. Um, uh, no, well, I shouldn't need it. I'll be a fine. Um, I'm looking at Hartley Hall, actually. Yes. And I think it's a terrific hall. People use it. I'm very yeah. lucky. I like it. And as we're having the regeneration in West End, can we have the same, same there, please? <laughs> <laughs> you can't take this one away, but I take the point. I take the point. Yeah. Yeah. So can we uh, pursue this? Uh, with, because we know we're going to get a community hall, but it's yeah. not going to be as good as this. No. So we would like something to send it because because we are very large, it's going to be over 2,000 dwellings. So I think. I take the point. Um, okay. I take the point. And you'll come back to us for something. I will. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I hope my record's okay on that. The <coughs> um, I'm going to go back now on this and uh, basically. With the CPO, with the first CPO and the public yeah. um, the CPO? Uh, inquiry, yeah. CPO one, is oh, basically we more. basically we had the valuations yes. of the two bedroom masonettes. Yes. Originally, um, the valuers valued it at 130,000, yeah. yeah. but within six months, the same masonettes have gone up to 218,000. This is both these values was based on local market value. Yep. I have still to find any examples anywhere in the country where the same properties went up by that much. Can you um, reply with examples of this or just tell or come back with saying that, that was, you can't? I can't justify that, can I? I mean, you know, there are two different opinions. A valuation is someone's opinion as to the value of something and a higher value is obviously better for the, the, oh, the, value, back back the, the value was done both by capita yep. before and then at the public inquiry. So they did it, they done the valuation. So it wasn't outside or that, that's where it sat to. So yep. it's the same valuation person who sat there and valued the same properties. I doubt it was the same person, but it was the same organisation. Well, it was the same person which I questioned at the public inquiry, and he admitted that it was down to his personal interpretation. <laughs> so I've just asked him, because I've been asking this question for a number of years, because I know other people will be going through yeah. this, and we'll go through it, is that how is, there's still be no explanation how this was actually done, where it's gone from 130,000 up six months later to 100. And sixteen thousand pounds. I'm not going to guess it's an answer. We're right, Angus. I'm involved with a couple of charities, and one of them got left a house. Mm -hmm. Long story. Yeah. But basically, the idea was the house would be sold, and the money would go to the charity. Mm -hmm. And the sensible thing seems seem to be to go to a number of valuers, um, get the one that sort of gave the best. Thing. But it, it doesn't seem to me to be all the way, rather than just getting one organisation having the capital to do it, to go out to local estate agents who know the area, maybe get three and take a middle. That's, that's all very nice and dandy on the open market. When you've got CPO, it's a closed market, so you've only got one buyer. But yeah, it's not purchase order. The value of the house, a local estate agent should be able to put a fair value if you've got three they, of them. They did, but they were a lot higher than what was accepted. So the way the valuations are done, fair, so, well, I don't believe it's fair, and a lot of the other people don't believe it's fair. All I'm looking for is the question that we've been asking for two years now, is to get some sort of answer, either it you isn't... An answer. It, a, I, I'm not going to guess it's an answer. 
I'm not going to guess at it because um, you'll hold it against me. But, uh, no, 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 no. I, just... I will get an answer for you, Jeff. Right, yeah, if you can put that on, that would be great. So either you can find examples within the yes. West Hendon area, which it was based on, yeah. or you can't. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are we going up? Yes, sir. Yeah, I asked you this question before because at the time I was informed that um, uh, the meeting would be recorded. I didn't realize you meant it's going to be minuted, not actually recorded and then available on the, um, okay. on the council website. So that, uh, we have a petition on the website, on the council website, about glyphosate, having it uh, banned in uh, public spaces. About? Glyphosate. For those who don't know, glyphosate is actually a major ingredient for... Um, uh, for a, a carcinogenic substance, actually part of Roundup. Yeah. Say again. Sorry? It is exactly. It's actually uh, it's the brand name is Roundup. It's uh, used on the pavements. Uh, I think three or four times a year. Yes. And it's actually the EU have actually tested it and actually declared that it's probably carcinogenic. No, the EU uh, didn't. Oh yes, the they, they actually have. The EU has just recently jumped. I uh, know that's actually that's because that's another group in the EU, and actually they base their uh, findings on Monsanto, who actually manufacture Roundup, and it's actually uh, Monsanto, of course, have been um, banned from the European uh, yeah. Union because of their uh, shenanigans, and it's worth 100 million None pounds for them. Poison. Okay, yes, I know this. None of us want to poison the community. Exactly, but then it's we do the have actually. That it's bad. We'll stop it. But, uh, yes, but you actually are you saying? You're not in receipt of the complaints I get that the weeds are growing in the pavements. People get, seem to get very upset about them. Yes, well. I know that. I, I agree. That's why actually there's actually a few things that are being used, uh, like in Hammersmith and Salisbury, are they use uh, hot water, which actually is boiling water, which also at the same time cleans the pavement and actually gets rid of, uh, say, boiling things like chewing gum. That sounds good to me. Yeah, but um, the things that uh, we do have the, this petition, you told me the last time you will only ban glyphosate if the British government as such actually bans it, even though a few places in the UK already, and like even like Paris, which is not in the UK, have actually banned okay. pesticides in, in, in total in, their, in the city. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, look, you're, you're getting your message across, and okay. each time you say this, I'll be more careful about it, but, but if the government says it's safe, mm -hmm. we'll use it. Unless we, unless we believe it, it's unsafe. So even, uh, so even actually we might get more people to sign the petition. Well, you, you in you there. sign a petition, yes, of course a petition will have an effect because we all know that a large number of people want it stopped. But, you know, someone could equally well do People are concerned about the weeds and the papers. It is a problem that we have to deal with. But if boiling water will deal with it, that sounds very attractive. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I would prefer the weeds rather than actually having ca cancer in about 10, 20 years. So. Uh, yeah, OK. Thank I you. Because that's basically what it is. I mean, there is a problem. There are too many foxes, 
and it's really a question of trying to persuade people not to feed them. Not enough round our way because they were the ones which was keeping the urban rats down mm -hmm. now that they've been chased we'll out. Have the rat, we'll have the foxes moved across to you then, <laughs> Jasmine, because <laughs> up in High Barnet they're grumbling and there's also someone who's feeding them up there as well, so um, we need to do it. Uh, yeah. you can answer the question, please. Yeah, uh, uh, last time last Yes. Yes. Maybe a moment to call you. Yes. Last time we reached you, and she couldn't come to the session for the. Well, did I get? Did I get? I gave you my. Yes, you gave me your card. But you, no one answered the phone. No, they're both up. They're answering, but I couldn't. They come with an appointment for me to see you. Oh, okay. That was my my issue. Okay. Because I'm the. Housing issue. Somewhere in Bangladesh. Yes. I'm in Bangladesh, but I think we're very close. No, I remember you asked. I was surprised you didn't contact me. Let's get your phone I number. Need, yeah, I didn't need to meet you up and to talk about uh, what I'm okay. getting through that area because mm -hmm. I'm just in the town where I've been living for 10 months now. Okay. And then anytime I come to council, I don't go any as an officer, I don't go to any council. And uh, anytime I'm calling them, they told me uh, it's really painful because. I don't understand why I've been somewhere. I didn't want to be honest. No, no, we don't. I, I'm just walking as a, as a everybody we walk and then and then because my love of increasing rent, that's why I'm homeless. And then I'm living in that area. My front door never closed for six months. For no. every safety, I feel that someone has to come and see the number. Because we start asking the contract, but we buy it says we there, but then the who's who have the house? You are very welcome to come and see me, or, or we will arrange for a housing officer to see you. Yes, yeah, uh, to deal with that. To see you, but I do need to come to the section where that Saturday we do a surgery at that But I Thank want you. to meet you now and talk to all the people who can see you. How we can help you out? Because I'm sure we can make an appointment. It would be nice to see you at surgery or some other time. I can yes. do that. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. <laughs> Yes, yes. We are high achievers in producing affordable housing. We don't stick by the mayor's target. The mayor has a very high target, but my argument is it's better to have a high number of units developed that are affordable than a high percentage of a small total. And Barnet has produced the second highest number of affordable homes of any London What's borough, affordable? second only to Brent. So we are on the case. Yes, we're mindful of it. And of the 26,000, a lot will be affordable, and the ones that bring across 40% will be affordable. Sorry, what's affordable? Affordable is probably quite a lot of money, but it is a figure that two people earning can afford to get a mortgage and buy somewhere. So earning how much? The average figure for Barnet, whatever that is. West Hendon, the affordable starts at 430,000. Yeah. Okay, yeah, wow, I'll buy two. But elsewhere at Dulles Valley, it is cheaper. And there are other that are affordable. To, we need to work on it. It's only by a big increase in supply that we can make housing more affordable across the feast. I mean, we are doing our best. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. You know, no doubt. I mean, one of the things that I would like to see a government do is actually build two or three more garden cities outside London. You know, just as well in Garden City was built. You know, there, there is a lot of land in Britain. It is possible to do it, and it is possible to preserve the green belt and build these further out. I mean, I think that's one of the answers, as well as the intensification of inner London. I think that it is possible for it to be done, and I hope people get on with it. I mean, we, I think we're doing our North part. Northrop Homes and Bishops Avenue. <laughs> they may be affordable to you, but not to me. Oh, I wouldn't say about them. Just knock them down and build flats yes, and stuff yes, like the ordinary yes. people. Well, I have some sympathy with that, and I'm grateful that we're going to be able to charge. Uh, double council tax on properties that are long-term empty. That should encourage people to get them filled up. How about up. the under lamps they're sitting on? I have some sympathy for that. I mean, because quite a lot of double. those houses That's are empty, 10 million you know, pounds each. potentates, and uh, it would be really money, it would well, perhaps be better if their well, illicit I, money was stored in a bank rather than in a house in Spitchley. Well, what gets me is we pay the same council tax as what they do, and yet they have dust cart which comes and picks us up. We aren't here 
he's done twenty four flats in a matter of minutes yeah and yet to do one house in bishop's avenue or bishop's road it takes a dust cart five to ten minutes to do so they should be paying more for the time for the extra time which the dust carts are over there so yes, they can do it with that too jasmine and there's a bit of agreement all of that so that should be taken into account they should be charged the the rates on yeah. that yeah. sorry Yeah, one very last quick question. So, Little Park, yes, all of that. Fantastic. And I think the landscaping on the estate is wonderful. Or the bit that got the varnish approval is not the bit that went through uh, where we were overruled. Yeah, but the, I'm talking about Little Park now rather than Manly Park. Yes. But, nevertheless. And then no, and the other bit, bit, the original bit, yes. yes. But the Millbrook looks not exactly great. Residents are paying at the moment service charges to the developer. Not yes. The park council is part of the Yes. So in a way, you're all getting some of the service charge. Yes. But at the same time, residents are still paying the same amount of tax. Yes. So you and I are both like enough to live on adopting no. words. Yes. And we pay our council tax. Yes. Yeah, this tax is serious with our rights and all the stuff. And those residents in the new estates mm. are paying double because they're paying service charge as well as paying their council tax. Yes. Now, I did an FOI request to the council mm. a couple of weeks ago. I found out that the only correspondence between the council and the developers of the original estate on adoption was primarily around the three roads that are in the yeah. way that goes up past yes. the school. That's been adopted. But there's no plans, as I understand it, for the rest of it to be adopted. Mm -hmm. So will residents in these new estates have to continue in perpetuity paying service charges to the developers? I can't give you an accurate answer now, because I don't know. Yep. I don't know. I mean, there seems to be an element of unfairness there. But on the other hand, it's pretty fair to the rest of us taxpayers, isn't it? Well, I, I think I'd like to, I'd like to know the answer. But I'd like to know the answer before I give it to you. I'll find out. Two very quick updates. Yes. Um, the question there mentioned the civil service. Yes. Do you know where that is with the TFL? I do not, but I, I, I can find out. I it was supposed to go to consultation, I believe, last year, and it did all the part of this year, and it still hasn't come close. No, but we'll, we'll check, we'll get a, a time scale on that. The other thing, there was a consultation on the inequality plan for Barnet. Yes. The issue is a big issue in your Yes. Where, where, where is that? Where are we with with the inequality plan? I think you'll find that most of the main roads rest with the mayor. I mean, when he attacks Barnet, I mean, unfortunately, I'm afraid I'm going to risk making saying something radical. I think it's a great pity that we're not in the in the reduced emissions zone out here. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, well, we're, yeah, we're doing, it's, it, it's progressing. I mean, I'll find out when it's going. Yeah, where it's going. Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you to the emergency welfare reform task force. Yes. And those they are amazing. I don't know if you were aware, but apparently a new survey's come out about um, bats getting confused with tall buildings, mainly yeah. to do with the glass which is in. Yeah. I mean, have you actually looked at this? Do you Personally, know anything about it? No, but I had, I had heard that there was a, an alleged problem, yes. I have heard of it. Yeah. I was just wondering, because at West Hendon, obviously, we got quite a few different types of bats, and yes. we wouldn't want to see them start to disappear when the no. tall buildings suddenly spring up. No. So, are you going to investigate fully and in and print up what you find? I, will, I won't become a bat expert, but I will find out enough to answer your question. Okay. I promise. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'll get one very last question. Okay. Uh, oh, it's from an iPad now. I can't find those. Some googly that you've been. Is there a thing? Not at all. Um, I just wanted to give you the one that you could give people here who might not know about it mm -hmm. um, a little bit of background for the proposal, proposal for the West London Orbital Railway that will go from Acton to Hendon. Yeah. Uh, there's a few people who live in yeah. the hill who would like to see it. 
packs go a bit further, yeah, maybe up to Mill Hill on the Harry Beats. Maybe St. Albans or even linking Luton Airport with Heathrow. Now, you'll be rather worried that after I spoke on this subject um, at the West London Alliance, I was cheered by the Momentum Group, which, <laughs> <laughs> which, which rather worried me. But this is a really, this is oh, a, no. <laughs> but this is a really good idea. Not everyone is aware there is a, a, a semi-used freight line that runs from Old Oak Common round to Cripplewood. I mean, it, and it's got a 20 mile an hour limit on it, it's decrepit. Network rails say they're running trains on it, but I've never seen one. They say they're running three a day on it. But this is, this is a priceless asset that, that could relatively inexpensively be brought forward. And I'd <coughs> like to see that. You know, the, the councillor concerned was, was a Labour councillor, and he took eight years to persuade me this was a good idea. But I've got the zeal of the newly converted on this one now. Because the old oak, old oak common, not everyone is aware it, it's over in Acton, but it will become a very large business centre. It will be on the fast railway line to Birmingham, which some people will use. It will also be on Crossrail, so it's a, it's, a, it's a really important railway junction, and the station there will be the biggest station outside London. So, it, it's a, it, it will be great for us from the point of view of going to Heathrow or connecting with West London. So we want this thing, and uh, Barnet Council has put a little bit of money into it, as have the other the other five councils going round. So we we've got we've got the deputy mayor for transport is on side with this. It's in the London plan. It's mentioned probably on page 400, but it, it is it it is mentioned. So the mayor is sort of behind it. And we are beginning to lobby government now. I think if we can get it through and just hand it. Well, I would like that, but you've just got to watch out for the duplicity uh, uh, of other agencies, as they have another plan to link it up with the sort of with the other North London line. Mm -hmm. So we want it to run to Cripplewood and Hendon to start with, but if there was an option to get it through to Mill Hill, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. No, no, I've sold on the idea, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thank you, that was a Not nice question. Not too much of a good, yeah. I think people of Barnet, we could all agree that that would be a, a, a real benefit for us. There was the original plan with the Northern Line that went from Golders Green up to Barnet and then from Mill Hill East round to Edgware, which would have incorporated another 30 stations. Yeah, yeah. No, I think they... You know, as the population of London has increased beyond the pre-war level now, some of these railway schemes could come forward again. I mean, not everyone knows there's a, a section of high-speed Northern Line that was actually constructed deeper than the, the actual Northern Line that we've got today. And there are still tunnels there. So one of my neighbours is an anorak about um, transport for London, so, so it's actually useful. Two stations at Highgate, one above the other. Yep. There's yep. But you can also, um, we did put proposals in for tram lines a lot, quite a long time ago, knowing that quite, still quite a lot of the roads actually covered up the tram yes. lines, they were never taken up. Yep. That's something else which is quite a feasible thing to look at, rather than just sticking to the tr well, trains. Highgate Surface Station is an interesting one, because I proposed that to a former cycling commissioner to use one of them as a cycle route to avoid using Archway Road. But, mm. uh, they resisted that. But if you imagine the uplift in value to Muswell Hill, if you could put it back on the, on the railway again, mm -hmm. as my grandfather used to commute from Muswell Hill down to King's Cross through Highgate Service yeah, Station. Because there's so, a lot of um, derelict railway lines that runs right up to Watford and back as well. So there's quite a lot around the country. That's right, I'm worrying you now by agreeing. I think, it's a, I think it could be a, a really good thing for us all, actually. On that happy note, I wish you all happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas, and thank you very much for coming tonight.